And for a closer look at what's driving the dengue outbreak, we're joined by Professor Lok Shimei from Duke NUS Medical School. Professor Lok, thanks for joining us. So we, we understand that one of the reasons for the higher dengue numbers this year is because of a dominant strain of the virus, which is the DNV3, which the population has less immunity to it as opposed to the other viruses. Question is, why is there less resistance to this strain? Because we haven't seen this strain for over 30 years. So that's why we are short of the immunity against this dengue 3 serotypes. Yeah. Professor Lok, I mean, the fact that we have less immunity to it, I mean, do, would you expect then the, to see these dengue numbers taper off once we do build up that immunity? And just how long might that take? Um, hopefully so. You know, to build out an immunity, you, you need people to get beaten and then, then they uh, have immunity against it. And then to get herd immunity, like a lot of people with the immunity and then reduce the cases, I, I think it would take like more than a year probably. Professor, look, you know, we typically see higher dengue transmissions in the warmer months of May to September because of accelerated Aedes mosquito breeding and the mm -hmm. maturation cycles and shortened dengue virus incubation mm -hmm. periods. Do you expect the situation to worsen mm -hmm. considering that warm and dry conditions will likely persist for a while? After all, we're only in July and we're seeing these numbers spike. Yeah, but recently it has been raining a lot. So I think there will be a lot more breeding sites. So the, the trend will follow like in the past year between May to September. and uh, But hopefully with good and aggressive mosquito control, cases can be lowered. Yeah. Professor, look, let's talk a little bit about your research because we understand that you've unearthed this new information about how the structure of the dengue virus can actually change with temperature. Can you explain to us how this might affect effective vaccines, perhaps, or treatments? Would it make them less sort of uh, suitable against the, the, or effective against the dengue virus? Yeah, so, you know, dengue, there are four serotypes, and then within the serotypes, you also have different strains. So what my lab, saw is, you know, when you grow them in mosquito cells um, at like 29 degrees Celsius, the virus actually looks round and uh, all strains and all serotypes will look round. But then when you heat them up to uh, human body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, some uh, virus strains stays round, what, but others can become bumpy surface, while some can actually change into something Look, that looks like a golf club structure. So um, it sort of suggests that dengue has the ability to change structures. So they would use it to escape from our immune system. So the implication for vaccine and therapeutics is, so for vaccine, in addition to putting in four different serotypes, you also have to include all these different shapes so that you can train the body to recognize um, all these serotypes and and, and shapes, and, and therefore you can have full protection against dengue. And for therapeutic purposes, you know, for example, dengue uh, therapeutic antibody, there are some antibody that are good for this round particle, and some are good for the bumpy ones, and some are good for the club-shaped particles. So in that case, right, in your therapeutic cocktail, you have to include all these different types of antibodies. Yeah. So then how realistic is it for researchers to come up with a vaccine that can effectively stimulate equally strong protective responses simultaneously against all four existing dengue serotypes? Yeah, it hasn't been easy for, <laughs> that, thus far. So um, the thing is when they you know, try to get a safe virus for each serotype and, and it, it, it works uh, when you test it in humans one by one, but then it doesn't quite work when you put the four together because, you know, the body will choose to, to react to one and then less to the other. So it's never really always equal. Um, 
that there is quite a few companies that are trying to produce it right now, but I think they're still in the phase of a clinical trial. We'll see how the result will be. But yeah, for dengue, it's quite complicated. It, it will take a while. Mm. The research continues. Professor Lok, thank you very much for sharing that with us. That was Professor Lok Shime there from Duke NUS Medical School.